Well, I hope that the uh, last few ones will come in and find a seat. I would like to welcome Arthur Watzniak Feldmeier of Vago here. And I was given a little intro for you by a colleague. Um, so this is why I'm going to read it. You all know the probably most uh, successful tr uh, f uh, movie trilogy, Star Wars. And for filming this epos, um, uh, this actually um, is around the uh, battle between good and bad, good and evil. As a fan of this trilogy, um, the next speaker has actually written a hero strip for his own company. And he will not actually report about a battle between catalog and data sheets, but he will actually thrill you with a symbiosis of the two. Well, I would like to cordially welcome you to my presentation, uh, Data Sheets versus Catalog, Symbiosis of the Two, from the individual part to the whole picture. Uh, but l allow me to introduce myself, as my name is Arthur Wozniak Feldmeier, and since uh, 2005 I've been working with Vago. Uh, for all those who um, are interested um, in our products, um, uh, from the uh, really complex structure of our products, and uh, I look after the uh, output of these uh, elements. I would like to briefly introduce you to our company. Since since uh, this is easier to do with a film, I brought along my image video. If uh, electricity, data, and energy are to flow safely, if the industry becomes smart, and if, if uh, infrastructure starts thinking, if buildings uh, learn to speak, and if with a little spring clip everything starts and ends with uh, open automation and more, then we're speaking of Vago. We connect, control, and uh, link machines with each other. As a family-owned business with 9,000 employees and over 80 sites around the globe, with the surprisingly uh, easy <coughs> solutions, and we're passionate about making things better time and again. Through our connection interface and automation technologies, we connect industries and drive uh, innovations because we strengthen what links industries. We are Vago. So uh, what did Vago make so successful? It was a spring clamp to connect to uh, conductors or cables. And um, this is a property that the usual terminal blocks cannot ensure. And this got around in the industry. And this is how, in connection technology, we were able to build a huge portfolio. Then later, we added the interface electronics, uh, connection uh, uh, components with some added uh, um, uh, functionalities. And this led us to the automation technology. It was speaking of highly complex control systems for the industry and also for building uh, automation for whole sets of buildings. Vago still is the world market leader for components in spring clip-based connection technology. Some KPIs, and I don't want to speak so much about our company, but at the latest print days, we still were generating sales below 1 billion. So um, Vago succeeded in growing even during difficult times. I would like to briefly um, explain how we ended up with the print suite and then actually cover the print catalogs at Vado. We have six uh, Bibles, principal volumes, uh, some um, even over 1,000 pages big and uh, issued twice a year or published twice a year. Then target uh, uh, group uh, catalogs, and we translate this into many, many languages. I researched um, how it all 
started in 1994 with the first print uh, um, catalog produced in Quark on a Mac computer. Then we changed over to the Windows world um, as required by our IT engineers and then also introduced InDesign. But there was a lot of effort involved. This is why we introduced the PIM system in 2004 and tried to automate catalog production, the classic uh, catalog automation. So a database connection, basically. This worked OK, but at times it didn't, and uh, um, at times at the expense of data quality. Then in 2017, we tried to do a completely new approach. From that date, uh, we actually have pursued or have pursued a facet approach for our catalogs. I don't want to cover this topic uh, uh, in too much detail. I would uh, like to invite you uh, rather to my lecture um, in room one at uh, 2.50. There, uh, with Horace Tuber, I will actually explain the magic about facet catalogs. And uh, Vago can actually um, completely turn 250 existing pages upside down in two minutes, then uh, actually um, uh, visit this uh, lecture. Uh, and we do so by simply de redefining 20 so-called nodes. And then what happened next? Well, the facet catalogs uh, proved a huge success. Um, we received superb feedback from our customers, our stakeholders, the PMs. They were first a little skeptical because they had to part with some uh, beloved historical elements. But then something happened, what we had expected for quite a while, but which uh, really proved dramatic. The um, uh, uh, page impressions for those Bibles actually um, uh, collapsed entirely. Uh, at present, we um, still uh, use a quarter for our customers um, uh, of what we need ourselves. And uh, this is why Vago decided that Vago will stop uh, printing the Bibles in 2023. But then something else happened. The requirements uh, for or made uh, on um, data sheets uh, kept increasing. Uh, requirements made by our customers in terms of uh, topicality, readability, comparability, degree of um, detail, integration, possibilities for the uh, online world. So our customers wanted to have it all um, uh, in the online world as well. Then, of course, the certification boards or bodies, the notified bodies, they come up with uh, really um, innovative symbols, and uh, it is up to us to actually always feature the, uh, the latest version. And each notified body, of course, wants to have find um, as, many, uh, as much data as possible at the product or in the documentation. What I've brought along is a connecting clip, a connector. This is our uh, sales hit. Uh, it allows us to connect three uh, uh, lines, a transparent uh, housing, so you can see um, how the uh, cables are fit. And we managed to actually apply three notified body symbols. Uh, and at the side, I can even measure how much of the coating needs to be removed from the wire so that it perfectly fits. And uh, if I do all of this, uh, then I no longer have to make it transparent. And this is why all of this information, all of these requirements uh, need to be transported into the digital world. So we have QR codes, and through the QR codes, customers can read all of these this information. Then there's a legislator um, uh, that actually um, uh, issues more and more rules and regulations uh, regarding safety and handling. This is so popular with the electricians. Uh, but we, you can also find these products with Amazon, other platforms, or DIY stores. And this means that these products are increasingly used by non-electricians. 
um, for uh, refurbishments, for instance, there is a cable coming out of the uh, ceiling, and um, uh, the customer actually wants to attach um, uh, such a terminal block. Uh, and when you do so and you don't do it properly, then um, you actually produce a short circuit and uh, you're out of power. This is the version for five uh, lines. Uh, so I can actually kill four, three times 400 volt. So like the uh, main supply for a wall box, and the, uh, these are used quite frequently, they have a fuse of uh, 32 amperes, and this really causes a boom. And this is why the safety information has become so important. Then there are also societal requirements. Customers, shoppers really uh, want to know about the sustainability of our products. So this is a very complex field, and we're still capturing the data here. Then um, we thought about the internal requirements, um, improved readability, it should resemble our catalog, the Vargo CI should be featured, and we want data compression, the highest data compression possible. Then we need data sheets for various pl pl platforms such as Amazon or Conrad. Then there are BME cats. This is all of our product information that we make available to wholesalers. And they can also import this information into the e-shops, the web shops. And in future, we only want to provide the links so that everybody can actually download our data sheets in future. Then, of course, we want to optimize our release processes. And these data sheets also form part of documentation for approval uh, so that we can actually use the logos for advertising. Um, we really came up against our limits, uh, and I'll give you some figures why this is uh, this was so. So we need uh, needed a scalable solution for the future. Um, comparable comparability was to be ensured uh, between certain uh, or various products. What does the uh, uh, product sheet look like, or the data sheet look like at Vargo? Uh, so on a minimum uh, space, we can squeeze in a lot of information. It starts with the order number, the article designation, then the image gallery, and there are various uh, formats, videos, drawings, photos, and of course, different page sizes. And this needs to be handled by such a data sheet. Then there's, of course, uh, advertising information created by uh, text robots, um, no longer done by editors, and they're pretty pretty um, extensive. Then the most complex thing, this is the technical data. The, our technical data is relatively complex, uh, structured on various levels, and shoppers need lots of references uh, to find uh, all of the necessary data, also the approval data in particular. And then the downloads, as I said before, through a click, you want to get to the download immediately and uh, actually be able to download the most uh, current version. Also, this also applies to the certificates that I want to download for the various approval symbols. Then in the um, uh, the spare parts, uh, the successor parts, the connecting parts. So this is knowledge, uh, the knowledge part. How do I use such a clip to avoid danger for others? Then, of course, there's also um, an overview of the platforms where I can also alternatively buy this. We saw that this works fine online. There's an incredible amount of information squeezed into a very uh, little space. But since customers don't need the 100 pages as a data sheet, we have just made available a form for our customers, our shoppers. And um, you can actually click on the information you want and also delete the ones you don't. I calculated what do we do in the background. We have roughly 30,000 items multiplied by 23 um, languages, and this means we're looking at 6.9 million data sheets. But theoretically speaking, there are 16,384 possible derivatives uh, by the uh, ticks in the boxes. 
income uh, multiplied by 7 million. This means that we're speaking of 113 billion, 49 million data sheets. So this is, of course, theory. But um, what the uh, shoppers really retrieve, I'm going to show you in a minute. But the machine would be capable of doing this. So customer shoppers could actually uh, choose uh, from a combination, a diversity of 113 billion different data sheets. With our facet catalogs, um, uh, we've covered the technical data um, in, in a fantastic fantastic uh, quality in terms of correctness uh, regard, as regards the uh, uh, degree of detail. And then, of course, um, uh, we also can handle this huge amount of di data. The representation, the graphical uh, representation, has not worked so far. We had huge issues with the conversion problems, lots of images that uh, stayed completely white because of the different formats. We were able to show the technical data in lists, but uh, some were lost altogether. So I have to look at various pages to associate certain types of information. So then the uh, colorful approval logos uh, listed looks nice, but still requires a lot of space. And uh, very important, the handling as is so important. And uh, you must ensure that there's uh, no images missing or that there are references missing. And the solution to this is the uh, um, print suite, because we were so successful with the print suite for our um, facet catalogs. So we said we we'll organize it as a service in the cloud instead of having to produce or regenerate 113 billion uh, data sheets uh, randomly. We actually have a highly smart caching system that understands whether there are any changes needed. And this is also checked by a smart interface. And this is what it looks like. This is the old version. Now it looks like this, like our catalog. You can immediately see all of the correct images. The technical data are shown in such a way that the customer can properly read the references. The side effect, the positive one, is that we were able to reduce the number of pages from four to two for those technical data sheets. Now on to the approval logos. Again, another level was introduced. So we group the approval symbols to speed the process. And here, we're coming down from two to 0.5 pages. This is the accessories uh, data sheet, which we didn't see at all before. And as you can see to the left, the, the images are so small that you can't see anything. And this has been translated into a matrix uh, representation as we do in the catalog. And we were able to come down from seven to two pages with the same amount of information. And you can see the images and read the images. Now, the handling instructions. I don't understand this if, if all the pictures are missing. And now this works so much better. It's a little more compact. And you can always see the beginning and the end. And the information that I want to get across uh, is now consistent. And again, we reduced the number of pages from eight to three. This was a huge, resounding success. Again, we received fantastic feedback from our customers, from the sales force, and even the management uh, praised this project in particular because uh, we really made a quantum leap in the customer journey when it comes to the touch point of data sheets. But we did not rest on our laurels and uh, uh, continued with product comparisons. You probably know this from the pod format. You compile a number of products and you can compare them. With the highlight here, you can see the differences are featured in black and all the identical elements are featured in black. And another project that we uh, initiated was customer-specific data sheets. So this is for customer-configured products. 
because we have an online uh, configurator called Smart Designer, and it allows customers to take a, a standard item and actually um, introduce derivatives to get one finished product. Here, we're taking the uh, basic uh, product data sheet and supplement it with the specific um, elements, uh, dimensions that can change. So we have to, of course, adapt the data in the right place. On the right-hand side, you see a similar configuration in color. And uh, we, we in future, you will even be able to actually compile very heterogeneous sets of data. We're in the construction phase here. But again, um, we have not come across any major challenges yet. Uh, so I suppose that we will be able to see the first big, good um, design this year. Uh, we offer this as a service, a cloud-based uh, service, composable com commerce. So we have uh, our service for these highly personalized data sheets. So this is the 113 billion versions. Then um, we also use JSON for rich clients. This is basically our Vago app. Then we've got the standard data sheets that I managed, uh, managed before for Amazon and Co. Um, if we actually also pass on the links, then we can, of course, not control how our customers, the wholesalers, when they receive all of the data sheets, how many of the data sheets they really generate. And this is why we said we do a pre-generation for German and English. So we're always safe uh, uh, knowing that the uh, latest version is pre-generated. And uh, nevertheless, the customer can go for the personalized data sheets. Then there's a product comparison for the website. And then we've got the customer-specific data sheets for the configurator. And I would like to invite you to the panel discussion at 2 p.m. here on this stage, where we will actually drill, uh, have a, a deep dive into the composable commerce topic. Um, so we heard a lot about data. We uh, heard about the interaction with customers. And as we learned in our keynote, uh, we want to be customer-centric. And to this end, you need to know your customers. And this is why we built statistics. Top left, you can see all of the inquiries from the web. On the right-hand side, all colorful. Um, this is broken down by country and uh, language combination. And hovering over it with the mouse, I can see immediately uh, which re inquiries were received from which country and which uh, language at which time. And top uh, uh, bottom left, you can see the uh, pre-generated data sheets um, that probably become obsolete when s some information was changed. And uh, this data is current. Um, and uh, we actually can download them or access them uh, in, in, in uh, real time. In the left chart, you can see what uh, um, the contradiction to our theory. Who, uh, what does the customer really use? Uh, there are 16,000 different uh, versions. And most of these versions make no sense. But what did the customer use? They use between 10 and 35 versions. Compared to 16,000, this uh, sounds very little. But uh, if I have only four boxes to tick, then uh, 35 is quite a lot, I think. On the right-hand side, we can see statistics on the topicality of our data to uh, keep an eye on uh, which data change when, where, internally. So what does our, does our publishing platform now look like? We have the uh, d data sheet, the individual data sheets, and in future, the, the personalized or customer's data sheets. Then we've got a collection of individual data sheets, which can be downloaded as a zip file. This will, in future, be integrated in one data sheet, like an order page. Then the product comparison we saw before. And on the other side, we've got the catalog service that we have not seen yet. This is the product list. This is a highly individualized catalog that we can generate with just a few clicks. 
and uh, the order numbers of the customer can be ingred uh, included even. It's not only about the assortments, but it's also about the finished combination of assortments uh, as uh, just equally performant um, is the main catalog. But we're highly flexible and very fast. Uh, we're currently still busy um, uh, finalizing the six Bibles. Two are still in the last implementation stage. And after we're done, this will be our status quo. In future, from these catalogs, uh, just like for the product lists, uh, we will be able to compile um, and produce uh, catalogs uh, in a highly uh, personalized fashion. So this is our first Magalog. So we're uh, parting with the Bibles and uh, approaching user-specific publications, obligations-specific uh, publications, so m with a stronger focus on the advertising element. And this is exactly what I said in the beginning. From the individual piece to the big picture, we can actually cover everything with our publishing platform, regardless of how the customer behaves, what uh, their requirements are. So we can go from very small and generate everything up to very big. And uh, what are the next steps? Well, I mentioned this briefly at the last print days. We produce lots of loose content, uh, and this usually ends up in some files. But uh, this year, we will start with our content hub, a system that allows us to retrieve all of these publications uh, and actually upgrade it, enhance it with our fancy data. Another story which uh, uh, was actually uh, had a pause or break uh, for resource reasons. This is the use of our components, uh, um, CCMS. So everything that's included in a handbook or a manual is included there as well, but not only as a plain text, but uh, classified by PI class. So the smallest information unit topic is then linked to personas, uh, products, and all of this can be accessed and downloaded and be used for marketing so that uh, all touch points have the same information available. This gives me uh, a high reusability of content, and uh, I can also do a content delivery platform. So in future, I can ask Alexa, what uh, am I allowed to do with this? And she can also warn me then, or it can warn me of what I am not allowed to do. And so much uh, for the publishing platform, but we have a few more little projects going on that I would like to uh, provide you a teaser for, always uh, with a view of generating benefit for the customer. We have a graphics robot, and for customers, we currently provide uh, dimension drawings. Some of them are very complex, and again, it's a modular product. So we're not doing one drawing per version, but uh, we're actually including everything in the legend of the drawing. Uh, they're even more complex versions. This is three dimensions. So when I want to sample this product, then I have to look at the number of poles, the offset, and so on and so forth. This is, of course, not really customer focused. So what did we do? Well, we actually cut up the drawings and rearrange them uh, on the basis of the poles and actually uh, embed the uh, dimensions in the drawings. So each version gets the right dimensions. This is an example of an eight pole clip. So in the middle you simply fill it up and then you've got the uh, um, extra version uh, to make this, um, uh, to not let this uh, drawing become too wide. So this is fully automated. So when the editors have uh, really edited the data, released the data, then the, da the data are uh, sent to the graphic graphics robot, and then the graphics robot actually sends it to the PIM. The basic drawing needs to be provided to be cut up. 
So this needs to be done by us. We have identified 900 units, and this gives us 15,000 dimension, properly dimensioned drawings. We're still automating the interface. Uh, we were lacking resources there as well. But from mid this year, we will finally be able to pursue this project so that we can complete this project. And one last point um, is the packaging layouts. Um, we have 50 units for the global market and 150 for specific countries in specific language combinations. And new, the 10 new ones added every year and 60 ones are revised. It was all done manually. And they're so compact and handling instructions are giving and approval data. And I would like to show you the current state of the project, but the new packaging are absolutely fresh and new. They're presented at the HMI, and this is why I was not allowed to include this chart. But let me tell you, all of the handling instructions uh, will be changed. So these 210 versions uh, will be built afresh manually. Uh, we're building the first templates now, and we assume that up to a dozen templates will be covered, and, uh, and then this will make any changes very, very easy. And this is already brings me to the end of my presentation, and uh, I would like to conclude with our corporate strategy. Vago uh, wants to become the most uh, customer-centric company in the industry. And to this end, uh, cust the customer journey is what counts. And with the individual facet catalogs, uh, we've already made a big, big step towards this aim. And what we want to achieve with this is the moments of success, as we refer to it at Vago. Well, thank you for listening, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Just wanted to know the graphics robot. What formats does did it support? Is it purely graphic, or is, is, there in, is it relevant in terms of planning? We work with the Illustrator and automate it uh, with the uh, 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 plugin. Hello. How do you identify changes to the articles that have to be newly generated? This is fully automatic uh, through a script that notices any changes as soon as there are any changes released for an item. It uh, notices this change. It's exported immediately. It ends up in an interim database. And this is then the data pool for the generation. But it is a challenge, yes, <laughs> uh, to uh, actually get the, the right change. <laughs> The facet catalog on the corporate website 
Is it, uh, is it delivered as front end through the print suites, or is it a different independent solution? The facet catalog. Uh, on the corporate website of Vago, under product, uh, it's like a typical e-commerce catalog. The big PDF catalog that you can download. The digital search for products. On the corporate website, you can see the heading product, and then I can filter and uh, see products better. The e-commerce e system and uh, this is how we actually access the data sheets. This is done by the commerce system or via the commerce system. Weitere Fragen? Any further questions? Yeah, one question. With the data leaflets, in the past, I had sheets, there were no pictures, you did things differently, and all of a sudden, you had pictures. Was this a technical product in terms of the new solutions, or was it just that the pictures were not decent? Both, both. Um, um, the images have grown historically. We have 80 million images, um, and the oldest go back to the Mac era, and... Um, uh, in the past, uh, we frequently opted in favor of other formats, new page dimensions, and it is so uh, uh, expensive to bring the old uh, visuals up to new standards. And this is why we said for new products, new visuals, we will use the new systems to actually keep the, the costs and the, the efforts bearable. But the conversion tool uh, also encountered major problems in this heterogeneous landscape we had. Any further questions? No, no one seems to have raised their hand there. Let me come back up onto the stage. Thank you very much for your presentation. I think lots of insights, lots of questions, uh, just short of the, you'll be here up until the midday br break uh, to answer questions here. We will continue with Bofrost together with our partner Lautert. Again, downstairs, the workshops will start soon. So enjoy the further presentations.